In today's video, I have probably the most interesting build I've seen when it comes to Outriders. The synergies are just crazy and the performance is just on another level as well. It's an anomaly powered trickster with insane firepower. The build is pretty easy to get going because of its crazy strength and you can also set up really good survivability and it's just overall tons of fun and quite different to other trickster builds in terms of playstyles. In this video, I will go through everything you need to know and all the mandatory mods and stuff for you to get started and then of course the best stuff as well so you know what to keep going for to perfect the build. Let me know what you think about this new template especially when it comes to the mod part because I did use this for the last Technomancer build and I think this is the template I want to keep using. Before we start off the video with the skills though, it's sponsor time. If you don't have enough time, nerves or can't find any good teammates but you still want to progress through the game and get those cool weapons and armors, well then dwing.net is your solution. Why spend time on the boring stuff when you can get dwing to do that for you? They are offering leveling, expeditions, custom streamer builds, guns with high rolls and much more. Just pick what you need. The boost works with account sharing and self play, so they do everything for you without the use of sheets or bug abuse. Dwing has been working for many years and they have a lot of client reviews and payment methods. You can check this yourself and with the code WIDS you will get a 15% discount on all services. If you have any questions feel free to contact an operator. With that said though, let's get back into the video. So taking a look at the skills here, starting off with Twisted Rounds, which is going to be the main source for damage for this build, since Twisted Rounds firepower bonus is impacted by anomaly power. So that's how this build is going to be crazy in terms of firepower. Then we have Hunted Prey, which is really good for mobility. Also, when we do teleport behind the enemy, we will get a 10,000 shield bonus, which is pretty good for the gear set and build that we're going to be playing. On top of that, we're going to be using the instant reload mod, so we will be able to keep 100% uptime on twisted rounds really, really easy. Then we have Time Rift, which is a deception skill, which we want to have, and this crowd control the enemies and, and also inflict weakness on the enemy. Sadly, weakness is bugged right now, so the duration doesn't work as it's supposed to do, as far as I heard. But also in this build, Time Rift is going to be really good for ad clear. So those are the skills that we're gonna use. We take a look at the skill tree here. We are gonna go quite different than a lot of builds you've probably seen. So I wanna give a big shout out to Nick2 here because he did the skill tree. I did get inspiration for this build because I did get a clip sent when he melted the boss with pretty much similar builds. So I did realize he was playing AR and also the gear set. So I did take the time to figure out most of the stuff here. But to fine tune the build I did talk with Nick. Since Nick did a lot of testing I figured it was worth to check with him. So I didn't have to do some of the testing. Because some of the testing in Outriders is just really annoying. Anyway the way I was building it first though was to go all the way here. To get the shadow embrace for that 15% firepower turning into anomaly power because this build will be focused around anomaly power and turning that into firepower right so i thought this would be the way to go and then of course i wanted to get these two but there's no way you can go this way to get it so i was going the middle tree this way but apparently Shadows Embrace isn't as good as getting like close range weapon damage that you get here. You also get the weapon damage up here and some crit damage 20% which is huge and then even more close range damage right. So this seems to be the optimal way. So you go all the way up here right so you get disruptive firepower so activating a deception skill which will be time rift in this case will give you 35% weapon damage for 8 seconds. Then we also have that with a movement skill right which is gonna be Hunted Prey. If we go down here on the bottom tree though, it's just a bunch of anomaly power, also resistance piercing, which you can turn into more anomaly power and crit damage, which we will go through later on. Anomaly power, and then we have this one right here. I guess you don't have to pick this one up, but if you wanna push your anomaly power even more, you can do that with this talent. Just use the melee skill and you increase it for five seconds by 30%, right? Down here we get Assault Master. I really wanted to make a build like this with the shotgun, but it's not really possible because of the pack tree, which we will get to, to later. So you get the Assault Weapon Master there, right? Anomaly Power, Anomaly Power. Counter Shield, so activating Deception Skill, increase Anomaly Power, right? 
Resistance piercing as well, as I said, we will turn that into anomaly power and crit. Combat shield timeline, so activating movement skill, more anomaly power, anomaly power, and more anomaly power, right? So a lot of really good stuff we're getting picked up here, right? So a lot of activating skills, right, gives us weapon damage, and activating skills gives us anomaly power. We take a look at the pack tree because here's when it gets really really interesting so we are going here in the bottom so firstly we have trigger man so your damage is increased by 15 percent for each skill on cooldown so we're gonna reach up to 30 percent because we want to have twisted on all the time right and this also will synergize with other talents that we will get into later like dead clock then we have Lies Deception, which is actually pretty crazy. So just activating a Deception skill grants you 15% shield every one second for 4 seconds, right? So this will give us 60% shield. So you literally spam Time Rift and you get the, the shield up to 60%. And shield is going to be really crucial for this build as well to get more damage. We got Failsafe Protocol, so when you get below 30% health, you get 50% shield and damage mitigation for 3 seconds. And this can trigger every 10 seconds. Then we go middle here, and here's the reason why this is not really working with shotgun. Increase your firepower by 40% of your anomaly power when using assault weapons. So once again, we turn that anomaly power into firepower. Perhaps you have trickery, which is just insane, especially with the stacking that we're gonna get into later. So crit shots increase your anomaly power by 10%, and this stacks up to 5 times. So 50% anomaly power increasement. The stacks are consumed by the next damage skill you use. So that is gonna be twisted rounds. So the way the build work, if I wanna explain it really quick here, even though we haven't gotten, in, gotten into the details yet, we're gonna stack as much anomaly power as we can, and then we're gonna use twisted rounds. And the thing with twisted round is the, the anomaly power you have the second you activate it, the twisted rounds is gonna stay at that value, which is what makes this so insane. And then also when you activate the uh, twisted rounds right, you will get a 50% assault weapon damage increasement for 7 seconds. So really good burst when you activate twisted. But that is the, the pack tree. If we take a look at the ascension tree, you want to go anomaly damage, anomaly power. You also want to get close range damage. Then I would go crit damage for bosses. If you don't want to focus too much on bosses though, you can just go elite damage instead or weapon damage right and i guess whenever i get this set or what you can add pretty early here i guess is resistant pairs so you would go that after anomaly damage anomaly power and close range damage you would go resistance pairs or maybe even before close range damage but if you do consider to go the resistance pairs path later that is a that is a really good pick to get 10 percent but that covers the ascension trees. So let's check out the gear set we're actually going to be using and explain a little bit more about that. So the gear set we're going to use is the shield beast set. It increases our anomaly power by 1% per shield. So at 100% shield, we get 100% anomaly power, which is amazing for this anomaly power firepower build. The pieces we want to use from the gear set are the helm, chest and pants because they do come with the ideal stats being anomaly power and close range damage. You want to have those stats on all your pieces. The gear set pieces also come with cooldown reduction, so you will be hitting the cap with those. So for gloves and boots, you want to try to get status power instead of cooldown reduction if you want to use status effect mods. If you're not going that route, you could go skill life leech if you want some survivability. Or you could slap on some long range damage, I guess. It's not super important if you're not playing status power. This build gets strong really quick though if you know how to play it correctly. So even if you don't have ideal pieces, just equip a 3 piece shield beast and you should be fine to start off. Moving on to the mods and starting with the weapon mods. When it comes to the weapon itself, you want to have close range damage and for bosses, you want to have crit damage. If it's not a boss weapon, you could skip crit damage and go weapon life leech for better survivability. As a third stat, I would go status power, and this is especially important if you want to go for certain status effect mods, as I said before, because that will make it last longer. Gun type, we want to have a burst AR for bosses because it's just the best damage in the game. But for ad clear, they are kind of overkill because this damage is just nuts. And also I prefer to hip fire, so double gun or a LMG just works better for that purpose. 
and on top of that you do get a bigger mag size. Looking at the weapon mods, there is two mandatory mods being Anomaly Enhancement that converts Anomaly to Firepower and Mage's Rage that increases your Anomaly power up to 40% by hitting crits. So you want to make sure you hit crits to keep it up. Having those two will be more than enough. As a fair talent for bosses, I would recommend Fortress or Dark Sacrifice. Don't let the 25% weapon damage tooltip on Dark Sacrifice fool you. It's actually not normal weapon damage, but like its own multiplier. So it's actually really huge. You can also as a fair talent go for status talents such as Noxious Spawns, Omen, Winter Blast or just the ultimate status mod like in my case I have improved Toxic which allow me to use the Toxic gear mod talents like Euphanizer and Virulent Compound which just amps the damage even more. While writing this script though Nick Chu told me about another possibly good fur talent to use on the gun which is Shield Maiden. So I decided to test it and it's actually really good to keep the shield up or just build it up. So that is definitely something you can consider as well. Just make sure you look at the guns you get and just go with the best gun possible and just adapt from there. But that covers the weapon mods, so let's move over to gear mods starting with mods for the skills. So we have Hunter Prey where we use instant reload as our only way to keep 100% uptime on twisted rounds. I personally am not a fan of Hyperloop since they share the same cooldown. It's great for mobility and also to build shield on the boss, but I just don't think it's needed at all. Because you could just spam time rift before entering the boss room and you will start the fight with almost full shield. It also does not synergize well with self medication which we will talk more about later. So I only use instant reload when it comes to hunt the prey. Moving on to time rift I'm using a little bit of pain which is actually insane with all the anomaly power we are stacking. I never really played Time Rift, so shout out once again to Nick2 because I wouldn't have known about this mod if it wasn't for him. Then we also have Long Range which makes Time Rift way way bigger, really amazing for ad clear and with a little bit of pain combined you can just kill the ads or even elites with only Time Rift. For boss farm I do not recommend Long Range though but keep a little bit of pain because the damage is actually really impressive even on bosses. Moving on to Twisted Rounds, we are using Strong Twist that gives 20% firepower increasement, which is just huge with anomaly power scaling, so definitely a must have. Then we have Skull Piercer that increases our crit damage, so pretty good as well. It comes on Shield Beast chest, so we can't really swap it out even if we wanted though. We also have Anomalous Caliber which increases your resistance piercing that synergizes really good with some other gear mods that we will cover later in this segment. That covers the mods that I like for the skills. Let's go through some more mods that are a bit more general. So we want to get as much anomaly power as possible combined with amp damage multipliers to take advantage of this crazy scaling. So we have Dum Dum Bullet which grants 12% multiplicative assault weapon damage. The math here doesn't really make sense, but it's almost 12% multiplicative, so I would assume that's just what it is. But yeah, it's really, really good. We got personal space for that close range damage. We have Dead Clock, which is another amp damage one. Not sure how this one is calculated, but after just talking to Nick2 again, it just seems insane with the scaling here. So definitely make sure to grab this one because it just amps the damage like crazy. We have Captain Hunter, damage to elite. Not really much to say about that one, just really good one. We have Anomaly Echo for that flat anomaly power increase on skill use and Arms and Anomaly for also a huge flat anomaly power increase on crit on a 6 second cooldown. Really good to abuse the anomaly power scaling. Then we have Self Medication which is a talent I do love for survivability. So whenever a skill goes on cooldown you will heal to full HP basically. Since we're using Time Rift on cooldown and Hunt the Prey often as well, we can make sure we stay healthy and also just knowing you can use one of those skills to get out and heal yourself up makes it really clutch to stay alive. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like Hyperloop as well for Hunt the Prey. Let's take a look at the status mod. So this depends on the fur talent on your gun. You could use some of these. I would recommend Toxic while using Ultimate Toxic Bullets or Noxious Spawn. Then we got bleed that could be really good if you got omen as a fur talent. 
The rest kind of works as well, but I think Freeze, for example, have way too short duration to get good use of compared to Toxic and Bleed. If you don't have a status as a third mod on your gun, you can go the resistant piercing route which would be the ideal setup for a boss killer because we will increase our crit like crazy as well. I would not recommend that for ad clear though since you want to go full out of hip fire and you're not going to be hitting that many crits. So we got anomalous caliber that gives us 30% resistant piercing when twisted round is active. Then we have unstoppable force which increases your anomaly power by 50% of resistant piercing. So that should put us up at 50% resistant piercing or 60% if you got 10% from the ascension tree as well. Then we have Achilles heal and resistant piercer that will give you 50% of your resistant piercing. So with all those mods combined it would give us 60% crit damage which is just crazy. Then we have two extra mods being power assimilation that gives you some flat anomaly power per elite on map. The value is pretty low though unless there is multiple elites. And then we have our of force which have really low value as well. So I wouldn't recommend it unless you can get a friend to run it for you, right? But yeah, those are the mods that I recommend and the two last ones just being some extras. I will put the mods on the screen now that I think is mandatory being 10 mods. Then you do have a few options to change depending on what weapon you have or if you want to focus on boss damage or add clear. These are somewhat a little bit ranked, so the absolute best will be on the top and the ones that are not as mandatory closer to the bottom. But I want to say that you want to have all 10 of these whenever you get them. But since it's really hard to get the exact pieces you want, especially if you just got it going, this should give you a really easy time to put together a good version of the build fast. So let's take a look at 4 additional mods that you can run. So if you have any status power on your gun, you can set it up like this. This will work really good for ad clear as well because you will have some survivability and also time rift helping you with ad clear. If you want to go the crazy damage slash like boss route, you would pick uh, these four up which is based on the resistant piercing. But you really want to make sure you have like all of these because if you only have like one or two it's not gonna be that impressive. But I don't think you would have any problem at all as long as you have the 10 mandatory ones while building up the build. If you have two purples with status power, you can consider using one of these mods as well, since if you don't have that, the uptime is like 2 seconds. But if you have two pieces with status power and also status power from ascension tree, you can get it up to like 3-4 seconds, which should be enough for the vulnerability. But that covers the mod section. Since some of you guys probably are interested, we can take a quick look into my current gear setup that is still a work in progress. I'm not gonna go too in depth with everything because I have explained what I'm using and my build is not min max, but just to see like where my build is kinda at. So for weapon, as I said I have improved toxic bullets, which is not ideal because I rather would have ultimate toxic bullets, but even though it's on 4 second cooldown, I will still have toxic on the boss all the time. Mage's Rage and Anomaly Enhancement, which is bis, right? And we got crit damage, sadly no close range damage though, but I can't really complain. The second gun I'm using is a Lucky Jinx. We got Anomaly Enhancement and Mage's Rage as a third, and here we actually got ultimate toxic bullets. Crit damage, long range damage, so once again no close range damage. But those are the guns I'm currently using. So this one is for ad clear right, and attack one is for bosses. If we take a look at the gear, I have gotten some pretty good pieces though, but I have done some really efficient farming for maybe 10-12 hours though, maybe even more. Just killing the boss infinity times, right? Yeah, Anomaly Echo has a third here, so really happy with that. We take a look at the chest piece, I got Captain Hunter as the third talent mod here, which is best in slot, and that's the first time I get Captain Hunter on a good gear set, so I was really happy with that one. The pants are pretty good as well because I'm running toxic, but I would like to get some other pants here actually, because I kind of want to make the boss focus build, so I can see how big numbers I can get right, and the toxic one is not the path for that. The gloves and the boots are recently swapped, because I got them with anomaly power, so this, so they are definitely not min max, and you will see the boots later on, but at least they have anomaly power though. So euthanizer, because we have toxic, resistant piercer, which is pretty good, but yeah, it's kind of scuffed in this build. I did get lucky though to get personal space as a third one here, so that's really nice. I am missing close range damage on these gloves though, but whenever I get a good boot, I think I will still be happy with the gloves. And I guess other pants though. 
Boots though, really, really bad. And normally power close range damage and long range damage. We are missing status effect here. So we have basically, in my opinion, two dead mods here. Rolled on dead clock there. So this one could definitely improve. I was using these ones earlier as well. In terms of gloves, I also do have these gloves right here, which are actually pretty good for ad clear because they got the time rift with triple the skill range. But that's how my build looks right now. I need the new pants and better boots and i have swapped around a lot of stuff but yeah for you guys in case you guys wanted to know my progression but that covers my gear now to the most important thing in the video and that is to understand how all of this works because if you don't know how to stack this up you will be doing really bad damage i'm gonna try to make this as simple as i can so as i said before or anomaly power will turn into firepower when twisted rounds is active so we basically want to activate every single talent that affects your anomaly power before we activate twisted rounds because they will look at the anomaly power when it gets activated so even if the anomaly power drops later we will still have the big buff on twisted rounds so to do that we want to make sure we have as high shield as possible because of our gear set we want to use both our skills to proc buffs and also have both skills on cooldown then we needed 5 headshots minimum to trigger the talent from the pack tree. And to min max it, you also want to melee before we pop the rounds. Most of this need to happen quick, especially when it comes to the skills, the headshots, because some of the buffs are only for 5-6 seconds, right? So it can be pretty rough to, to get it perfect. But don't worry about that, or even if you don't do this perfect, it, the damage is still gonna be really, really good. So it would be something like this for a boss room. You would spam time rift as soon as you run towards the boss room since you will keep your shield when the boss starts. Then you open up with time rift into teleport. You hit 5 headshots slash crits, then you melee and then you activate twisted rounds. Ideally you should have 100% shield for min max and also both skills on cooldown. Then you just use your skills again when they go back so teleport into time rift. Then you just DPS the boss and you should have crazy damage. This is definitely a bit tricky and it's not the biggest deal if you mess it up. And especially for the last boss in Trials, it's pretty hard to keep the shield up and get a perfect kill. Because he doesn't like when you're close to him, which we are gonna be because of the teleport. And of course the close range damage mods. But just try to get 100% shield and hit the 5 headshots before you proc twisted and your damage as I said will be good. But yeah, that should be it. I hope this will teach you how to build the best trickster build in Outriders World Slayer. I might leave you with some more gameplay if I didn't think the video have enough so you can see the build in action. Otherwise, you can catch me playing it live at twitch.tv slash wids where I'm also answering questions about Outriders. I usually do a few carries here and there as well and I think this weekend friday or saturday most likely saturday i will be doing an uncapped sabaton that's gonna be focused on carrots so make sure you tune in for that if you have any questions you could also drop a comment below and i will try to answer it make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next outriders video and probably an updated video on this build when i get it in best in slot state with that said though i catch you guys on my stream or in the next youtube video